Welcome to Discovering. Tonight, Kirsten takes a look at the Wildcat Falls Community Forest Project. It's just unbelievable, and it's worth saving, so that's what we're trying to do. And we'll take a look at some of the UP wonders not found on any tourist maps. Stick around, it's Monday night, and time for Upper Michigan's very own Discovering. The secret streams that flow beneath the cliffs of colored stone. Forest thick and healthy with birch and pine and oak. Surrounded by the greatest lakes this world has ever known. The black bear's awesome presence as he roams the hills and fields. Call of the timber wolf, the loon's lonesome trill. The eagle soaring high above, the trout lies deep and still. These are what I treasure, the only way I measure. The feelings that I have for this fine land, there is so much to discover. When you're a long-time lover of Northern Michigan With each passing week, I realize more and more just how fortunate I am to call the Upper Peninsula my home. From shore to shining shore, there's a wealth of wonders just waiting to be explored and experienced. And when we think about these wonders of the UP, these special places, we might bring up places like the Porcupine Mountains or Taquamanon Falls. We may tend to forget about all those amazing places in between. We all have a spot close to home that's our favorite, I'm sure. Maybe a small off the beaten path waterfall or a get away from it all stretch of back road. A favorite fishing spot or maybe a special view from a ridge where we hunt. I'm talking about those places you won't find on any tourism map. Places that, relatively speaking, very few have laid eyes on. Because of what I do and the people I get to meet, I'm fortunate enough to get to walk on some of these less traveled paths. I recently met with Tim Cohane, who, because of what he does, gets to experience some of these special places as well. I sell real estate, and yes, I sell houses from time to time, but what we really do is and our focus is on recreational properties and being stewards of the land here, whether it be the Upper Peninsula, Colorado, Florida, Texas, it doesn't matter. The group that we, I am with, Land Leader, uh, that is our project and, and goal in life is to manage these properties properly and get the right people in there. We met up with Dave Hawley, who brought us to a spot on his property that few have ever seen. A great example of a UP unknown hidden gem. We were here uh, at the gorge and we we're, and were looking at the old growth that we have left along the river and we decided to set this side many, many years ago because that's what we wanted to do. We wanted to keep this old growth along the river. There's a lot less trees standing now because age is taking care of them. It's an interesting uh, look at forestry when you look at the old growth. The gorge is a spectacular piece of a property as far as we're concerned and of course you know we it's pretty much unknown to people uh, occasionally few people know about it but we just kind of kept it there we have a hiking trail we walk in and several times in the summer we just walk in here and eat our lunch and we just enjoy what we consider the spectacular view and the sound of the, of the water in the gorge. In my real estate experience, I've been so, so fortunate to find these hidden gems that nobody knows about. Like the owner said, there's probably 99.9% .9 of the people of Marquette County have never seen this particular waterfall. It's absolutely stunning. But that's what I'm able to do in my job. I want to find these beautiful places that nobody knows about so somebody else may come along and be a steward of that land also. So I've been just nothing but blessed all my life when it came to this and when some of the places I go out to, it's absolutely spectacular. I do not want to leave.
right now we're, we're standing on the shores of Volker Lake. Uh, as we know, uh, Mr. John Volker was a author in Anatomy of a Murder. Everybody in the Upper Peninsula knows about the film, and the lake was part of his family heritage. Uh, we're looking at a 28-acre lake uh, and several hundred acres of land that are available, and it's pristine. There's nothing out here except an old hunting camp. It's just one of those unique places. You just, you drive down this road, and it's sandy, and it's dusty, and you think, what could possibly be down here? And you get there, and you come out, and you see something like this. I mean, come on. Can, I, can you beat that? The UP is still a wild and remote place. Take the time to get out and experience it for all that it is. Take a summer drive to somewhere you haven't been yet. Or maybe take an alternate route, a longer route, to get there. Pass through some of our small towns. Stop and have lunch. Talk to the people who live there. Leave yourself extra time to take a hike or a bike on a trail along the way. Don't just look at the Great Lakes, walk the shoreline. Don't just watch a waterfall on TV, take a hike and put your feet in the water. And by all means, don't forget to look in your own backyard. You can find some pretty wonderful stuff just taking a walk in the woods near your home. Sometimes you just need to stop and take a closer look. I think what we've seen today, looking at what we call it the gorge here, the river, and uh, the, and some of the setback. But the UP has uh, has many places like this, and those are those those aha moments when you're walking through the forest or the woods, and you all of a sudden come on to a spectacular scene or sight that really means something. And for that moment, aha, the world kind of disappears, and that's all you have is you and that sight there in the forest. I came to the Upper Peninsula in 1970. I was 17 years old. I went to Northern Michigan University. I was a city slicker. I knew nothing about the outdoors, to be honest with you. But I didn't know there was something about up here that was different than where I was from. The best thing about the UP is the people of the UP. And once you get up here, it's about a lifestyle. It's not about bricks and mortars. It's not about how many trees you have in your property. It's about where you live and how well you can live up here. And I have found it to be an extraordinary experience and I am the best ambassador the Upper Peninsula has ever seen. I love it up here. I don't want to be anywhere else. Therefore, I've made my living selling these beautiful properties to people who hopefully care about much about them as I do. The UP still holds some secrets. There are still places without signs of human disturbance. Places with little or no footprints. Places where wildlife can live and die without ever seeing a human. Places with only the sounds of nature. We still have that here, here in the UP. And I think that's pretty amazing. The UP 
UP is home to hundreds of waterfalls, large and small, some popular tourist destinations, and many hidden deep in the woods. One lesser known waterfall is Wildcat Falls, tucked away in an old growth forest just north of Waters Meet. I met up with a group from Northwoods Alliance for a hike to the waterfall and to learn about this unique piece of property it flows through. Northwoods Alliance is a 501c3 and a 509a2. It, it, it's a nonprofit public charity land conservation organization. We're looking at a waterfall on Scott and Howe Creek, which is a series of steps named Wildcat Falls. From up above here, we can see the series of steps, and they, most of them seem to be between four and six feet, that form about a 25 to 28 foot elevation difference in, in, the, in the creek itself. And, uh, it's not like it's any great distance either. I think it's, is it 100 feet long maybe? That's, that's about all. Then what really gets interesting, and as we get down below the falls, the, the canyon wall that's formed by those very rocks, some of it's covered with trees and some of it is just open rock. But you can go a lot of different places in the UP and you can see a waterfall. And you can go a lot of different places in the UP and, and you can find rock outcrops. And you can find trout streams and you can find vernal pools that are apparent on this property. And you can even find old growth forest with cedar and hemlock and so forth. But to find all those things in such close proximity as you do on this parcel, make it pretty special. I mean, it just this trail that we walked in this morning to come to the waterfall it'll be less than a mile and we'll be back to the vehicle and we'll have seen all these different features this uh project truly is an ecological marvel the public access is in the commercial forest program which which allows let's say limited public access and it's only as good as the landowner's wishes to keep the land in the program. This uh, property had been part of the Ottawa National Forest for decades and they traded it away in a process that went on for a number of years. Their justification for trading it was that it was a somewhat isolated part of the Ottawa National Forest and that it had its kind of its own boundary lines. It wasn't contiguous with a, let's say, a greater block. In 2016, the recipient of the lands contacted us and asked us if we had an interest. And I brought together a small group of conservation-minded investors to purchase the land from him, and then they approached Northwoods Alliance with a letter re requesting help in finding a permanent and publicly beneficial conservation solution for the property. So that's what brought us to the project that we now call the Wildcat Falls Community Forest Project. The Community Forest Program mandates public access for let's say the non-motorized traditional forest uses. And those things would include hiking, so bird watching and so forth, and, and uh, cross country skiing and hunting and fishing and so on. In 2019, just a year ago, this project ranked number four in the country amongst the US Forest Service community forest and open space conservation program applicants assuring us of 50% of the acquisition funds needed to purchase the property. So what we've done through our public outreach is work to acquire the matching funds, which need, according to the uh, community forest program, need to be non-federal dollars. So we're working with local foundations, conservation groups, and, and individuals.
the Wildcat Falls project is 160 acres. There's 120 acres that is contiguous here with the waterfall going through it. And then there's a 40 acre parcel that's on a, a hillside just up from the Michigan DNR boat landing on County Line Lake. This part of the property is northern hardwood. This is a big oak that I'm leaning back against. Community engagement has been has been really satisfying here. From the beginning, the Upper Peninsula Environmental Coalition gave us strong support. That was followed by uh, Friends of Sylvania Wilderness. Then we got a real nice modest grant last fall from the uh, Community Foundation of the Upper Peninsula, their Sustainable Forestry and Wildlife Fund. We even received financial support from Weyerhaeuser Corporation last fall. And more recently, just earlier this year, the Copper Country chapter of Trout Unlimited gave us a, a modest grant as well. So we've had a pretty good deal of community engagement along with dozens of individuals to help us achieve the goal. This property is so diverse, so complex, with the old growth. The old growth alone is worth saving. Old growth is usually defined as, as a forest that, that has been in existence undisturbed for at least 150 years. And some of these trees in here are at least that old. It's in the cedars, there's quite a number of cedars in here, and these cedars can last a long time, hundreds of years especially on these rock outcrops. But old growth is important because there's so little left. And most of the forests in Michigan, including the UP, are not old growth. They're actually young forests. They're only maybe 100 years old. And uh, as a result, they're not as diverse. They're not as complex ecologically. A lot of these trees, can't. the seeds can't get started in the thick duff. And uh, so they tend to, if they're lucky enough to fall on an old rotting log like that, often called a nurse log, they'll be able to sprout and uh, it gives them constant moisture and gives them a place to get started. And then as the log decomposes, the roots are already wrapped around it and through it and the log will decompose and disappear and uh, the tree le is left remaining looking like it's standing up on stilts. The author escapes me, but he said a great society's legacy should be the amount of wild land that it saves, not the amount of land that it destroys. So that's basically what we're trying to do here. This piece of property not only has extensive old growth forest, both hemlock and, and cedar, the cedar becoming quite rare in the area, but it also has the premium trout stream running through it with Wildcat Falls, a beautiful waterfall. It has these magnificent outcrops. It has this rugged terrain. And uh, this property has probably not been disturbed since before the uh, Europeans invaded the area. This is pre-Cambian rock. A geology friend of mine uh, has uh, told me that this rock goes back between one and two billion years. Billion with a B. So the entire package of all of these features in one small 120 acre parcel here is, is just unbelievable. And it's worth saving. So that's what we're trying to do. I feel a, somewhat of a personal responsibility to help provide these places for future generations. And this project specifically has been 10 years for us in, in the making. And that seems like a lot of time, it seems overwhelming, but really what's 10 years in the life of the rock outcrop or these old growth trees? Well, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next week right here on Upper Michigan's very own Discovering.